It's easy and it's popular to be pessimistic. And while there are many things that frustrate me about the new car market, one could argue that now is actually the best time to be a car fanatic, and today I'm going to explain why. Okay, before keyboard warriors commit to war crimes in the comments section, I do want to go over two big current issues that distract us from the positive side of the times. One is sticker prices. They've been climbing faster than average as of late, and while prices when adjusted for inflation aren't too crazy, if you look at the average purchase price, it's a bit insane. So unless your job started paying a lot more too, a lot of these new sporty cars can seem rather unattainable. And sometimes they are unattainable, even if you could afford the sticker price, because markups have gotten so common with these specialty vehicles. Finding a GR Corolla at sticker is not impossible, but it's extremely difficult, especially depending on your region, or if you live in Canada, where honestly, I'd probably just buy a different car. And don't even get me started on what happens with the Civic Type R. The next concern I should address is the rise of electrics and more stringent emission standards. Now, this is bittersweet. I completely understand the point of getting to more green transportation. Though some of these regulations have had backwards results, and the response by many manufacturers is actually to build larger cars that are also not really any better for the environment and to take internal combustion to a higher level of efficiency, we're going to make things a little bit more complicated. We also have EVs, which provide incredible performance. They are cleaner than internal combustion, even if your electricity is coming from coal and you account for the production emissions. But none of the ones I've driven so far have had much personality. And it's hugely important to us enthusiasts that our cars feel alive to compensate for our non-existent souls. We're only going to see more and more EVs over the years, but the thing is, manufacturers are listening to our concerns. Now our favorite brands here have committed to going electric. It's what they need to do in order to survive. But as a result, right now, there are a ton of enthusiast-oriented vehicles that they've been releasing that act as sort of swan songs to internal combustion. The best, the most fun cars that they've made in quite some time. Toyota, for the last 20 years, really hasn't done very many enthusiast vehicles outside of forcing Subaru to make an enthusiast vehicle for them, and then also contracting BMW. But in just the last couple of years, they've added the manual transmission option to that new Supra, something they definitely didn't need to do. And then on top of that, they introduced the GR Yaris, and now the GR Corolla for the North American market. Not a big volume car, it was a passion project, and we're also getting stuff like that from other brands. Now with Dodge, they've definitely had much bigger success with all of their Hellcat models, but just before they had to kill that kind of thing off, they put that engine into literally everything they could. The Grand Cherokee, the Ram, the f***ing Durango. Like, it's completely mad. So I do wanna take some time and talk about more of these cars. So the GR Corolla, obviously all wheel drive, 300 horsepower, zero to 60 in under five seconds. It is truly an econo box with big performance numbers and a stiff suspension. Just like what you used to be able to get with the Lancer Evolution and Ford Focus RS. And if the dealerships have ruined the experience for you or you wanna save a little bit of money, you can go with something like the Hyundai Elantra N. You can go with a six-speed manual, a dual clutch. It's great on the track, and it actually has a fairly nice and spacious interior, too. Then there's the car that Hyundai wishes was just a friend. Owners try to assure their Elantra N that they never dream about it, but that only makes them think of it more. To be honest, I think about it, too. The front-drive car to beat the Civic Type R, which still uses a turbocharged version of the K20 engine. It's a great motor. Honda shifters are glorious. While I haven't gotten the chance to actually drive that, I've heard great things, extremely capable on a track too, if you do that kind of thing, but also practical and well-equipped. You'll pay for that, especially since you'll probably be stuck with a markup unless you have Honda connections. That makes, what, like 316 horsepower? For roughly the same amount, you can also buy a muscle car. You can get a Challenger Scat Pack that still uses a 6.4 liter pushrod V8, making 485 horsepower. That's going to be phased out at the end of 2023. The Camaro SS 
is gonna die out too after the 2024 model year. And the Chevy is a true supercar killer on a track. It handles super well. It has a great platform underneath it and still a burly V8, just like the Ford Mustang, which makes a little more power than the Chevy with its five liter double overhead cam V8. The personality grows too, as it spins up to a red line of 7,500 RPM. You can get a base GT for 44 grand with a six speed manual, of course. Ford also says this is the last generation of V8 Mustangs. I also can't imagine Lexus's amazing 5 liter V8 holding out much longer, but that goes into some of my favorite cars like the Lexus LC500. Now, sadly, we are witnessing the death of the manual transmission VW GTI and Golf R. They're going to be dual clutch only after 2024. Right now, you can still buy one with a stick shift, but those are both in their respective categories fun comfortable and versatile cars that come with a truly compact footprint. Maybe not the most entertaining cars of their respective classes, especially in the case of the Golf R, but very fun with a lot of tuning potential after the fact, just like the Subaru WRX, which carries on in its very Subi form. It's a capable car on any road, in any weather condition. It's fairly spacious, it's affordable, and those are actually easy to find too. Making them a car I definitely recommend enthusiasts at least check out. I would also say the same about the Civic Si, but that's much harder to find. And speaking of kind of hard to find, we have the Toyota GR86 and Subaru BRZ, both of which are highly entertaining, compact coupes that have a usable trunk, compliant ride, and sticker prices around the $30,000 mark. And if you want a car that's more fun, easier to buy, but less practical, the MX-5 is a great option that's reliable enough to outlast most marriages. And let's not forget we have things like the Lotus Amira, which still come with a supercharged V6 and a manual transmission if you want it to. The Porsche 911, you can get a high revving GT3 with the manual transmission or also the Cayman with again, four liter flat sixes. These are engines that car guys drool over and you can still get them today. It's not gone yet. And in 10 or 15 years, they'll be on the used market for hopefully much less. Though just like escaping a fire, procrastination is probably a bad tactic, especially as this is likely the last stand for cars like that. Some may appreciate in value, and that's probably a trend we will see for the used icons we love too. We also have the Cadillac CT4 and Cadillac CT5 Black Wings, the latter of which previously known as the CTSV, didn't have a manual transmission. They threw it back in there because, again, this is the last opportunity that they're gonna have to do it. Each of those have great power for the money and use a variant of that excellent alpha platform from the Camaro. GM also flipped the script with the Corvette Z06, which dropped the old supercharged engine in place for an awe-inspiring, flat-playing crank, naturally aspirated 5.5-liter V8. I can't think of a better swan song to internal combustion engines. Well, I guess it would be better if Chevy dealers didn't ask for a whole Corolla of markup. I do also want to point out, even like the more normie cars, we're seeing a lot of sport-esque trims. Some are a little bit more convincing than others, but emotion is kind of being pumped into some products, even at Toyota with the new Prius. That is outlandishly better than any generation prior. And then we even have the Toyota Tacoma, which even though they really didn't need to, still offers the manual transmission for 2024. There's the Ford Bronco, which, yeah, they're trying to steal some of Jeep's sales, but they too had a manual transmission designed for the truck, and the vehicle as a whole has a lot of thought put into it, and they really didn't need to build it. They could have just done something like the Bronco Sport just to capitalize on the nameplate, like Chevy did with the Blazer. Now, in the pursuit of performance, efficiency, and safety, some cars have gotten heavy. Others have gotten numb. For a few reasons, electric power steering makes more sense, but it often reduces feedback. Turbochargers can also reduce some of the personal of a vehicle and are much more common these days. There are still plenty of amazing vehicles new, but if you do want a more raw experience or maybe you can't afford some of these new cars, 
there are still a lot of used cars that don't require restoration. Some of my personal favorites from the near past would be the C6 Corvette, V8 Camaro or Mustang, Honda S2000, and all of these. And if you aren't afraid of German cars or potentially high running costs, here are some other cars that regularly cross my mind. This list could go on endlessly. Some of those are really expensive, but these aren't like 40 year old vehicles where it's super hard to find parts yet. So that's another reason why I would say that we do live in a great time for car enthusiasts because if you have nostalgic feelings for the past, a lot of your favorites are still driving on the road regularly. In fact, if you're also wanting a car just to abuse and take drifting, you can get like a Nissan 350Z, a Mustang, an old BMW 3 Series, Infiniti G35, again, a Miata. Those are all vehicles that you can buy for a fairly reasonable price and have a lot of fun with them without completely tarnishing your financial future. And if you want front wheel drive or all wheel drive, you can pick up an old Civic Si for five to 10 grand, a Nissan Sentra SER Spec V, VW GTI, or Subaru WRX. You want something more weird? Maybe consider a Corolla XRS, Mazda Speed 3 or 6, as those aren't too old either. I can't say all of the cars that I've listed have dependable backgrounds, but they're entertaining options you can get for less than 10 grand. So what happens next? Well, manufacturers are looking into making like manual transmissions for EVs, because again, they want to make fun cars. And Toyota made a patent for one which would give you basically an artificial clutch. Obviously you don't really need to use the clutch, but contemplate with me for a second. Making a manual transmission in an EV gives you huge potential because you could simulate basically any car that you want. It'd probably be goofy, especially in the first generations, but you could give it like Mark IV Supra sounds and then give it a Mark IV Supra power band and power output. You could literally simulate just about any vehicle with a manual transmission at that point. And you could also do clutch kicks. The cars will also have the ability to be outrageously quick. I mean, you can see a Tesla Model S giving a Bugatti Chiron a run for its money in the quarter mile. Imagine what a sports car that's much lighter could do. Outside of speed, you know, obviously getting like the same vibrations, the same sound is gonna be virtually impossible. I also believe that internal combustion could live past a new car ban if they became more recreational rather than street legal. Things that are meant for the track only that don't need to abide by the same regulations. Probably would just be a rich man's thing, but who knows, it could look something like the Polaris slingshot. The future of fun vehicles is more unpredictable than ever. While that may give me a little anxiety, I'm happy that we currently have plenty of amazing cars at our disposal. That's all I have to share. Let me know in the comments section if there's any big points that I missed. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like to help me take on the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more fun, detailed car content without fluff. Check out my Patreon for an additional podcast, and I'll catch you in the next one.